Oh, hi. You just caught me having a nice drink of the old H2O out of my Yorkshire water water bottle. But how do we treat the water to make sure it's safe to drink? Let's talk about it. Hi everyone and welcome to the science behind we're on episode five and it's water treatment so how do we treat the water that comes out of our customers taps well we're going to go and see chris dingley who's a process engineer who's going to take us on a tour of a water treatment works so we can see how we treat that water so let's go meet chris and go on that tour hi my name's chris and i'm a process engineer at cello heights water treatment works Today I'm going to be taking you around the site to show you what we do and how we treat the water for the Bradford area. So a brief description now of where the water comes from that supplies cello which we treat for supplying the surrounding areas. So we have a few reservoirs and this is the Bradford area water supply. So the furthest away we've got Angram and Scar House which was built by the Victorians and it's feeding water down the Nid aqueduct and this is approximately 32 miles away and it's all fed by gravity down the Nid aqueduct and it feeds all the way into cell cello here so another interesting fact uh, is that this Nid aqueduct built by the Victorians drops two inch every mile on its way to cello why, why is that? Gravity, it's how Victorians built it oh, right, so okay. the guarantee every mile it would drop two inch to ensure it's gravity fed so there's no pumping at all it's all just pure gravity from this new aqueduct it's crazy isn't it <laughs> yeah that's victorian's for you yeah yeah that foresight isn't it it is it, yeah they knew what to do yeah so here we've got an aerial view of cello water treatment works partly this used to be a stone quarry and we've actually found some drawings that date back to 1858 that show this tank actually being built which is a tank for storing the clean water so this treatment works dates all the way back to 1858 we're here where the raw water comes in from Sky House and Angram and this is the raw water that comes down and you can see the colour of it that's all the dissolved organics and muck that has actually dissolved into the water so to treat that we put in a coagulant and this coagulant acts like a bonding agent so it's got like a positive charge and all the muck and dirt in the water has like a negative charge and positive and negative attract and by doing that we create a process called flocculation and we'll actually show you the flocculation process going on in the jar test. So over here you can see that pure liquid there is the coagulant that's been added to the water for flocculation. Right, so basically what's happening there is what happens in the precips which we'll go to and actually show it as it happens in the works but this is a demonstration of what's going on. So as you can see down there, this is where the water came in, it goes down these channels and it's fed up to these precips where we've actually shown you the flocculation taking part in the lab on a small scale, we're now going to see it on a big scale. Right, we're at one of the precips which is what we were showing you with the clarification and the flocculation in the lab, we're going to show it you in real. to a cone and comes up and rears over here. What we do, to show you where the sludge is, you can see it going down through the clean water and eventually it will disappear into the sludge. There you go, and that sludge gets drawn away, sent to the sewer. Clean water rears over 
and then goes on to the next part of the process. So this one we've taken out of service for cleaning and you can see all the sludge in it. Normally that sludge then is sent away to sewer, but because it's built up that much we have to physically clean it out. So what's weird over in the precips goes into a pipe and then comes into the first stage filters. It goes down through a layer of sand which is about a metre deep and that sand traps any small particles and especially cryptosporidium which can only be removed by filtration. The water goes down through the sand and then onto the next part of the process. So throughout the whole of the process from the start to the finish we are constantly monitoring the water quality to ensure that we supply clean portable water to our customers. So once water's gone through the first stage filters, it goes through these pipes and passes on to the second stage of filtration. Prior to that we had sodium hypochlorite and that is basically to kill any bacteria that will be present in the water that hasn't been caught in the first stage filters. As mentioned earlier, we had sodium hypochlorite prior to the second stage filtration and these are the pumps that dose sodium hypochlorite into the water. Well, like I mentioned earlier that we constantly monitor the water for its quality. You can see all the instruments down there that are monitoring the water. come from the first stage filters through the pipes, we've added the sodium hypochlorite for dosing the killing bacteria into the second stage filters and through chemical reaction we remove manganese through these filters, it goes down again through a bed of sand, out through another pipe work and off into clean water tanks ready for the customer. That was water treatment, so I hope you enjoyed that episode and a big shout out to Chris as well for showing us around. Not every day you get to see a water treatment site and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your mates and in the next episode we'll be going to look at a pumping station. So until then I'll see you later, bye!